That is gonna get so addicting. What's up guys, welcome back to Pat Outdoors. This is gonna be part four of the Yasma IN10 Supermoto build series. It is freezing outside, but we're gonna go out on the road since I wanna get the speedometer on this thing calibrated. And I also cannot wait to see how fast the new setup actually goes. Just a quick recap in case you're new here, we already installed the FW22 brushless motor upgrade from Soshin, new plastic set from Yasma, custom seat cover from Bolts and Volts, adjustable front suspension, and 12 inch Supermoto wheels and tires from Ride or Die the Moxon controller, and I'm currently using a 72 volt, 20 amp hour battery from Amorge, which I just borrowed from my Tudio just to get the controller calibrated for now. I also got some help from Billy at Electric RVA to get my controller settings dialed in for the new parts that we have installed. Now my target speed for this build is 80 miles per hour, though I'm not sure if we're gonna reach that with the current battery installed since that has a peak output of 250 amps and it's also 33 degrees outside. So I'm sure we're gonna get quite a bit of voltage sag, but we'll see how it goes. We're gonna give it an initial run here at 450 amps, which is my middle setting. Just get the tires warmed up. You know what, screw it, let's go 700 amps. Holy shit. We just did that initial pull. I haven't even really warmed up yet. And we already hit 70 miles per hour. This thing is so fast. Well, you know what? The power is super manageable, even at low speeds. The throttle set to torque. The throttle is very easy to manage, even in tighter spaces. All right, while we still got full charge, or relatively full charge, we're at 81 volts. Let's try to see what kind of speed we can get out of this thing. there somehow. Oh man. The BMS trip. Oh man. We freaked the battery out. We did tune it above the battery's capability though, so my fault. Damn, I did not think that I was going to be walking this home so soon. But hey, we already hit 70 miles per hour on the first pulls. So I can't even imagine how this is gonna perform on the new battery that I just ordered. Okay, that said, let's turn the power setting down a little bit. Battery discharge is currently set to 225. I'm gonna turn that down to 200 since it's super cold outside. This thing's probably getting quite a bit of voltage sag. Okay, so we turned the power down a little bit. Hopefully that's enough to keep the battery happy for now. Dang, I was getting a little bit greedy with the power there. This thing is so much fun. I can't wait till we have the new battery in and turn the power up even more. So it doesn't have to cut off like that on us because this thing was definitely tracking for much higher speeds. So as of right now, the only thing holding this bike up from going even faster is the battery output. This 20 amp hour battery is rated for 200 line amps continuous, which is simply not enough to supply all the power we're looking for to hit 80 miles per hour. I'm thinking I can even mess with the gearing, maybe step it down a little bit on the rear sprocket to a 53 tooth maybe. I think just the rear sprocket and the bigger 30 amp hour battery is gonna force this thing over the 80 mile an hour mark easily. But this new Socian FW22 motor is no joke. 
Like I had to really roll into the throttle very easily because it produces so much torque down low. So I could definitely gear it a little bit taller to even squeeze more speed out of it, but I want to keep the snappiness of the throttle, so we're not going to do that just yet. All right, let's hop back into the full power mode. Hopefully it doesn't cut off with the 200 line amp setting. All right, are we going to go over 70 miles per hour? Too many cars on this road. Man, I gotta find me a nice open road. I'm not a big fan of this neighborhood that I moved in. It's full of a bunch of Karens and I've actually gotten pulled over right down the street from my house. So, so I haven't been very excited to ride the bike on the road. You know what, screw it. Let's just do a pull on the main road. Damn, too bad we're down to 77.4 volts already. Not sure if we're even gonna be able to hit the full speed at this voltage. too low at this point. Yeah, we're down too much voltage at this point. Dude, this thing is so fast. So quick update, I actually just ordered a custom battery for this thing, which is a much larger 30 amp hour with a peak output of 360 amps, 300 line amps continuous, which should supply this up to 25 kilowatts of power for 10 seconds. So I'm definitely turning up the controller to 900 amps when we get that new battery in, but we're not gonna get it for another six to eight weeks, supposedly, according to a morge. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see the results with the new battery. So for speedometer calibration purposes, let's just take a look. The speedo is reading 30 when we're going 16. So we'll use that as a reference point. Okay, took a little bit of a charge break there. We are back up to 81.4 volts. So let's get the speedometer calibrated. We got to go to this screen and head down to, I believe it's speed calibrate. Speed display calibration default is set to 1450, which we know is very inaccurate. It is showing 30 miles per hour when we're going 16 by GPS. So this value is used to calibrate displayed speed using phone GPS. If set to 500, display shows 60 kilometers per hour, but GPS shows 80 kilometers per hour. Adjust to 80 divided by 60 times 500 equals 666, and that's the figure we're supposed to input. So GPS speed is 16 divided by 30, which is the display speed times the current figure, which is 1450. We're supposed to input 773. So if you've never used a Moxon controller before, the middle figure is what you're adjusting to, the right side is the default, and the left side is the current setting. So let's get the middle figure up to 773 since that's the closest. And then I'm gonna hold M to save the settings. That's gonna completely reboot the controller and hopefully the speedo is a little bit more accurate. I also wanna test out the other features of this controller such as the reverse function and wheelie mode. But to test out the wheelie assist functions on a Moxon controller, your battery charge must be at least four volts below full to make space for the controller to charge the battery back up under regen when you're letting off the throttle and when it's regulating a wheelie. I wish that was something closer to two or three volts. Not sure how it is with the EBMX X9000 controller, which might be the next controller I might try out. All right, it looks like the speedometer is reading a lot more accurately now. The speedo is actually dead accurate. It's showing 23 when we're going 23. So I don't even think I need to adjust it at all. 
And I gotta say, I really like the rideability factor of this controller with just the self-learn feature and putting it into the torque mode for the throttle setting. Like anybody should be able to hop on my bike and not be so intimidated by a overly sensitive throttle. Like that's my pet peeve with my Talaria Triple X with the nuclear P24F controller. Like the throttle settings, all of them are, I'm just not too happy with. But this one, I'm not even gonna change a single thing with the throttle sensitivity. Now let's try out the reverse function. So hold R and twist it, there you go. Man, nice to have a reverse on a pit bike. The last bike I rode that has a reverse feature was a Suron Ultra V, which is actually one of my dream bikes. I just don't know if I can justify the purchase right now considering what we've spent on upgrades for this bike so far. I also just had a baby two weeks ago, so we should probably wait a little bit. All right, I just turned it down to mode one, which is showing 201 phase amp output. Yeah, that's too slow for me. I think that might even be slower than stock. And mode two at 450 phase amps. That's probably my favorite. Like it's a lot faster than the stock Suron, but I don't have to be sketched out about it. Like mode three at 700 phase amps is just way too much for daily use. <laughs> Yeah, like that's one third throttle maybe, and the front end just feels really light. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be using mode three too often for daily use, especially if I'm just cruising around my town or riding in the city. Okay, let's try out wheelie mode. All right, I just set it to 10 just to see if it functions first. Oh shit. Whoa, that is crazy. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it's a little bit unnatural at first. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh man, that's gonna get so addicting. That is such an addicting feeling. I'm definitely gonna play with that setting a bunch. I might even turn up the angle even more, but I'm probably gonna wait for a slightly warmer day just so we can go out for a longer ride with this bike. If you guys enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content and want to keep up with some of my projects, such as the Yasma IN10 Supermoto, make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn your bell notification on. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching. Wow, that is going to get so addicting.